We're midway through Season 1 in our West Ham career mode and things are going very well both in the Premier League and in Europe. But today, we're about to take this team to the next level as we're finally about to sign a new star striker. But as ever, if you're enjoying the series so far, please feel free to like and subscribe and let's get into today's episode. And of course, we will be starting out with your comments. The current player we're linked to is Tosin Adarabayo. He's very tall and strong, no-nonsense centre-back that is reaching his prime or could be in it right now. He could well very be a good replacement for Kurt Zuma. Another player I'm very surprised we're linked with is Brian. Ryan Brobby. Although he isn't very tall and a strong striker that West Ham love, he could be a great option for the future, or even for the first team. So that's an interesting shout about Brian Brobby. Everyone knows about my quest to try and find a star striker to lead the line for us for the remainder of this career mode. And with the likes of the injury prone Danny Ings and Mikel Antonio starting to come to the end of their careers, someone like Brian Brobby is once again a very interesting shout. However, with me signing him in my Everton career mode, I kind of think it would be quite nice to try and see if I can bring in some other players to this West Ham team whom I haven't signed in previous seasons. Now defence is an area of my team that I have long suggested that I need to improve on. It seems like it is the weakest part of my overall squad and with the club captain and my best centre back Kurt Zuma now out injured for the foreseeable future with quite a heavy injury. Perhaps it's even more important not just for now but also for the long term future of the club that I might want to bring in another defensive reinforcement to try and replace him. And in Tosin Arabayo we've got a very realistic option. He's playing for Fulham as you say he is starting to enter his prime with him just being 26 years of age and I think if we can qualify once again for more European Cup competitions I think it is a move to West Ham that I'm sure he would be very happy to take. Let me see what my scout has got to say for him and let me see whether or not he's someone I might want to pursue even in the January transfer window or perhaps in the summer. You should sell Lucas Paqueta in the summer because he's already made a deal with Manchester City for 80 million. I think you should sign Rayan Cherky from Leon as he's just like Lucas Paqueta and only at just 20 years of age. So yes there can be no doubt that in real life Lucas Paqueta for quite some time flirted with the idea of moving to Manchester City and with him being the best player in the entire squad and him having that something special with him starting to reach his prime I think he could be a likely candidate to want to try and move on to a bigger club come the start of the summer transfer window. Now Rayon Cherky is a man who has been long touted to make the move to the Premier League in some way shape or form with him just being 20 years of age and having five star weak foot and skill moves and high attacking work rate and having his best years of his career long ahead of him I'm sure he's a man who's likely to be on the lips of every big team in Europe, not just in this career mode, but in real life as well. However, I have also been suggested some more modest and perhaps some more realistic targets to focus on in that central attacking midfield position. So perhaps similar to what I've done with my striking options, I may consider putting a poll out there for you guys to decide who you would like to come in to play in that position for me in Season 2. Speaking of Season 2, this is a more Season 2 thing, but if you ever want a new winger, Pedro Neto is a great shout. Obviously, he's linked to Arsenal and Liverpool, but if you do get some sort of European spot, he might choose you as game time isn't promised at a bigger club. I'm currently doing Wolves and he is brilliant. Same goes to Kuna in a fast central attacking midfield role. Good stats all round. So yes, I did decide to bring in a left winger at the very beginning of this career mode and Somerville has pretty much done fairly well so far. He's up by two ratings to 78 overall and he's got three goals and three assists in just 16 appearances in all competitions. However, with his backup, Maxwell Cornet being 27 years of age and only 76 rated and unlikely to improve prove anytime soon it is likely that I am going to have to find a replacement for him if I want to take my team to the next level and have a decent reserve on that side of the pitch. Now EAFC have got Matthias Kuna's default position as a striker but I'm sure he could be retrained in that central attacking midfield position and looking at his overall stats it looks like he could be a really good addition to this West Ham United team. As for Pedro Neto we know that not just in England but across Europe several big teams are sniffing around for this young man's signature. Would he want to move to West Ham at this point in time? Who knows, but there can be absolutely no doubt. But once again, he too would also be a fabulous addition as well. Speaking of attacking talent though, as you well know, I am looking for a long-term replacement for the likes of Danny Ings and Mikel Antonio to lead the line for me up front. And whilst Jared Bowen has done a fantastic job in that false nine position so far this season, chipping in with eight goals in 17 appearances in all competitions, I don't really think he is the long-term option for me. And I'm sure he would prefer to move back out to his more natural right midfield position. And of course, when it comes to signing a new striker, I have left that decision all down to you guys watching. Now, as you well know, I did put out four different polls with several different strikers on them for you guys to make the decisions as to which ones would make the final shortlist. And we managed to narrow it down to these final four options. The first one being Benjamin Seshko, the 20-year-old who absolutely lit up my RB Leipzig career mode. Clearly, you want to see him in a West Ham United shirt as well. Santiago Jimenez, the 22-year-old Mexican who, like others, is touted for big things 
fans across Europe with him racking up over 60 appearances for Feyenoord it's only a matter of time before he potentially moves to the Premier League Joshua Zerksi a man who's starting to make his way through the Dutch international scene he didn't quite make the cut at Bayern Munich but since moving to Bologna he is really making waves across European football and finally the towering 6 foot 2 Swede Victor Gaiocares at 25 years of age out of all of them perhaps is the man who's most closest to his prime and with him formally playing for Coventry City in the championship perhaps he is finally ready to return back to English football and finally get his opportunity to play in the Premier League however with 43 million pounds still left in the bank but with the start of the January transfer window about four weeks away you're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer to find out which of those four I decide to bring to West Ham United Football Club now last episode I make the bold decision due to some of your suggestions to move away from this more default 4-2-3-1 system into a more ticky-tacker style 4-3-3 false nine and whilst an injury to my club captain Kurt Zuma has really taken a blow to morale this new system has had a phenomenal impact on our defensive capabilities with Alphonse Areola being the clean sheet leader in the Premier League keeping nine in just 14 games and with those fabulous defensive performances not only lifting us up to the top of our Europa League stage securing a spot in the knockout rounds not only helping us clinch a place in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup against Newcastle United but also helping lift us up to a very unlikely likely third place in the Premier League just one point off of Aston Villa who sit at the top with 14 games played but with Kurt Zuma injured and with Mavropanis sensing a wonderful opportunity to stake his claim in the starting 11 knocking on my door wanting to get the opportunity to start in our very next game he is going to get that very opportunity as we are about to kick off this episode with a mammoth clash away from home against our arch rivals Tottenham a Tottenham team who are just two points behind us in the Premier League also vying for that final Champions League spot and oh how much they would love to put a dent in our Champions League hopes this season as they welcome us here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium under the lights for what is going to be a fabulous night of football. However, we have a problem and that is the fatigue is ripping through the heart of this West Ham United team as you can see due to that I have had to make several enforced change to my usual starting 11. Areola does keep his place in goal as does Van Ewig on the right but Aguerd is really struggling. He starts at the back alongside Mavropanis with Emerson on the left. Socek gets the nod in midfield along with Alvarez and James Paul Prowse who moves into that central attacking midfield position with Paqueta dropping to the bench and Somerville starts on the left frustratingly Kudos can't make the start as Corne starts on the right and Antonio is the man who will be leading the line for us up front well what a big game arguably the biggest game of the season so far a titanic clash here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium against our arch rivals can we claim what will be a huge three points here tonight on the right hand side into Kulusevski he's got the beating of Emerson turns around in really nicely and then flicks it back into the path of Emerson Royale who plays it central into Benton Core. Le Celso's picked up a really nice pocket of space and manages to skip away from a couple of challenges but Emerson the left back's come across and won the ball back really nicely here and Antonio now who has a history of performing well against Spurs wins it back high and now Alvarez can try and play it down the channel into the on-rushing run of Somerville Somerville manages to get there ahead of Romero keeps his place continues on to his right hand side in the end he's run into a little bit of trouble and has to blaze that one high and over the bar Alvarez now back into Socek Socek just wriggles away from the challenge of one of the Spurs midfielders here. As you can see, we've got all our men inside the Tottenham half here. But it's such a tight and compact defence. We're unable to break through so far. But Alvarez now has it. Alvarez feeds it out to Corne on the right hand side. Flings the ball across. Gets a corner for his troubles. And it's one that, of course, the set-piece master James Ward-Prowse is going to take. And he's going to float it into the box here. Looking for the big head of Antonio. It is a big head. But in the end, it's way over the bar. Young Min Son under a bit of pressure from Van Awig. And he's done a really good job there of winning that ball back high. Antonio now tries to whip it across into absolute no one it was easy in the end for Romero to win Benton Cork gets it clear but this has been a really really good start here for West Ham Son didn't manage to get the ball ahead of Corne Antonio though can't win it I would expect better from the big man up front Emerson Royale here down the line into Kulusevski Kulusevski with a rare foray into our half here Spurs have not really been able to carve out any opportunity so far but Kulusevski the Swede is going to hope to see if he can make a change to that right now plays it back into the path of Benton Cork into Emerson Royale looking for an option doesn't manage to find any Somerville gets their first and he almost gets the second challenge in but in the end Basuma wins it back well for Spurs Kulusevski has it once again Kulusevski wriggling around Emerson tried to challenge didn't do a good enough job and Kulusevski strikes from the outside of the box and Ariola is beaten well Kulusevski just danced his way around a couple of challenges and unopposed on the edge of the box it wasn't even into the corner could Ariola have done better the man of the moment the man who was on sensational form couldn't do anything about that and Sponsor Koglu celebrates 1-0 but it was a really disappointing way to end what was a fairly comfortable 
all opening 45 minutes. Yes, we didn't exactly create any clear-cut opportunities, but we did manage to maintain possession, and we looked the more likely of the two teams until we gave away a really sloppy goal. It's Corne now. It's going to play it into James ward prowse as we look to try and start the second half better than we ended the first, but Spurs win it back, and now they can try and bring the ball forward into Pavlidis now, who seemingly is leading the line for Spurs. He is the Harry Kane replacement as the Celso picks it up, gives it into Kulusevski, tries to go past a couple of my defenders, but Van Awig picks it up, and he will try and bring it out of defence here into Corne. Corne now into Antonio. Antonio still manages to pick it up and looks out wide to the left-hand side into Somerville. Somerville now to try and ghost into the box here. He's looking for an option up ahead of him, manages to find Corne. Ah, tried to play it into Antonio. It just ran behind him, and that's a big opportunity missed. Doggy for Spurs. Down the line into Heung-Min Son. Lovely ball. Cut through my midfield like a knife through butter. And played it into Lo Celso, who has played it into Pavlidis. Back out wide to Heung-Min Son. Now they've worked that really well. But uh, in the end, he's lost it. And in the end, we just about managed to wriggle away from danger as Corne now plays it into Antonio. This is the moment for us to try and get an equaliser as Antonio plays it down the channel. Looking for Socek on the run. Socek puts Romero under a bit of pressure. But the Argentinian stayed cool, calm and composed at the back exactly as you would expect him to. And he won the ball back really well for Spurs. And now they build out from the back. Basuma down the channel looking for Pavlidis. Ajed comes across. Good challenge. Wins the ball back. Neither team really able to carve the other one open here in the opening. Sorry, in the second half as Basuma wins it back. And straight to Tariola. That was a big opportunity for Spurs. And it all came for a sloppy piece of defending from us. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. And as you can see, I am making a four-man change. I'm calling the Calvary. The likes of Paqueta, Bowen, and also Kudos come on to hopefully try and spark some creativity into this attack. But it's Spurs who've got the corner. And Kulusevski takes it short into Heung-Min Son. Tries to do a step over. Plays it back into Kulusevski. Alaba now the former Bayern Munich man into Petro Porro and he smashes it into the back of the net to double Spurs' his lead just as I make four changes. Oh, it's just so frustrating. What poor timing, but Spurs once again undo my defence. Pedro Porro allowed just a ghost into the box and on his weaker foot smashes a strike past Ariola, who once again perhaps could have done better. Spurs lead 2-0. Mavropanis. Ooh, almost lost it to Kulusevski there, and the Swede was hot on his heels, but eventually Emerson did manage to pick it up. Jared Bowen now down the line, back into Emerson, who's going to try and bring this one forward here. Can we try and see if we can get some sort of consolation goal back as Danny Ings on as a substitute? It almost fell to Paqueta, who just couldn't get there in time, and we were so close to getting away back into this game. Out to Emerson. Emerson forward, tried to play it forward, but once again, Romero is in the right place at the right time, and intercepts, and with just about four minutes plus stoppage time remaining on the clock, here. Time is frantically running out for us to try and at least get a goal back into this game, let alone an equaliser. But it looks like Pedro Porro has got other ideas as Human Son now is played into him and he goes into the box here. I'm frantically trying to get back Ariola. Oh my word, he just beaten it out into the box. Fortunately enough, Ajerd was in the right place at the right time as you doggy with a wonderful ball over to Benton Core. Ariola with a big save. Van Awe keeps it in play as the referee blows for full time. Well, all our good form has come crashing down to hold. hole. Dan Postacoglu shakes my hand. And the Spurs players celebrate in front of their own fans here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Hard luck for the West Ham United faithful and the travelling fans as that man Pedro Porro, his goal and the second for Spurs was enough to give them a 2-0 victory at full time. Well, I've said it before, this new formation has given me more defensive solidity. But frustratingly, I just can't seem to find my feet in play games and it means that Spurs' 2-0 win ends our unbeaten run and lifts them above us in the Premier League as we now drop down to fifth place. Place. And with the likes of Lucas Paqueta, Jared Bowen and Mohamed Kudos not featuring in the starting 11, it really does go to show that their replacements just aren't quite up to scratch. And after Jared Bowen got sent off in the sixth minute in our very next game and Lucas Paqueta missed a penalty in the 72nd minute, we are fortunate that Socek managed to pop up in the 84th with a last minute equaliser as we draw one all in our very next game against Fulham. However, a hot streak in European football in the Europa League continues as a goal from Antonio and from Jared Bowen gets us back to winning ways. 2-1 against Dynamo Kiev. Frustratingly though, a hard luck in the Premier League continues as a late equaliser in the 85th minute from Semedo means it's another two points dropped as we draw two all at home against Wolves. But our Carabao Cup run will continue as we progress to the semi-finals. Two goals from James ward prowse and a late one from Somerville means we secure a huge 3-0 victory away from home against Newcastle. But once again, despite an early goal from Jared Bowen, we are brought crashing back down to earth in the Premier League with an almighty bang as a 4-1 smashing at home against Manchester United means that we have gone from third place at the very beginning of this episode all the way down now to seventh. And we're now four points.
points behind Manchester United in the final Champions League spot and we are way off Manchester City you lead the way at top there's more positive news in the Europa League though as with six wins from six we've absolutely demolished our group stage leading the way and it means we are through to the knockout rounds and after defeating Newcastle 3-0 in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup we have been drawn against Aston Villa in a winnable tie in the semi-final one more win we will get to the Carabao Cup final but after a ferocious run of games once again it is back to the football and once again it is back to London to face off against another local rival this time it is Arsenal at the Emirates for another titanic clash under the lights in the evening. It's been a really hard start to this episode in the Premier League. We haven't managed to get three points and my word, what a shot in the arm it will be if we can do it against the North London Giants. Arsenal here today. But once again, such a close run of games means more fatigue has ripped through the team and that is meaning I have had to make more enforced changes to my usual starting 11. Ariola keeps his place in goal as does Van Aewig on the right. Ajed is part of by Ogbonna in the centre of defence with Ben J. Johnson on the left-hand side. Socek and Phillips start in midfield. Jared Bowen on the right. James Ward-Prowse in the centre with Somerville on the left. Antonio leads the line, as you can see. With him leading the line, I have switched back to this more established 4-2-3-1 formation. Zinchenko has the throw here inside the opening five minutes. Every single man inside the Arsenal half here. Lovely bit of play from Jorginho there. Just a flick it over my defender's head. Jorginho has it back now in the box. Mavropan is with a wonderful challenge. And now Van Aewig can bring it out into the path of Jared Bowen up the line. This is a wonderful opportunity for the Englishman to try and stake his claim back in the starting 11 on the right-hand side of midfield rather than leading the line. And he's found a wonderful ball into Van Aewig who can burst into the box here. Doesn't really have many options. Plays it back into the path of Socek on his left. Ends up dragging it wide. That was a big opportunity. It was actually looking for the ball into Antonio, but it fell to Socek. Sochik in the end got it all wrong way wide Tomiyasu floats it over lovely pass into Saka and Saka's got the better of Johnson down the left hand side and Saka's got it back from him Saka still has it on the edge of the box into Gabi Jesus into Jorginho straight down the pipe and Ariola will say thank you very much but he won't say thank you very much for much longer because we've got him given away a really soft penalty it's assured who's gone and done the damage let's take a look at the replay it was miles after the shot. What on earth was the centre-back doing? Jorginho just ran into him. To be fair, it's a bit of a harsh one to give away. But still silly play from Ashard. And now the Arsenal fans look on here as Saka has the opportunity to put the Gunners 1-0 up. But it's a marvellous save from Ariola, A flying save into the top right-hand corner. Saka cannot believe his eyes. Let's take a look at the replay. Saka thought he'd buried it into the top right. But what an extraordinary save from the goalkeeper. He keeps his clean sheet form alive. Arsenal have a corner. And it's one that Jorginho is going to take with about 20 minutes on the clock here. They go short. Asaka is going to try and see if he can make a mentor as early a miss, uh, mistake there with the penalty. But it's Somerville who wins it back. And now we'll bring this one forward. And there's no challenges whatsoever. It's Tommy Asu in the end who's trying to cover. Tommy Asu hasn't got the pace or the stamina to keep up with him. And Somerville back into the box. And once again, I was looking for Antonio. And once again, he wasn't to be found. This time it's to Calvin Phillips who lines up a strike. It falls to James Ward-Prowse back out to Van Aewig. First time ball into the box. Looking for the back post once again to Antonio who could not be found. Arsenal get the ball clear. But end-to-end -end stuff here in the opening half an hour. Into Jesus. Jesus on the turn. Lovely turn away from a couple of my challenges there. And Jesus though is being challenged once again by Jared Bowen but he's managed to wriggle away from it into Saka Saka goes past Johnson he's definitely got the beating with him but then drags his shot wide into Van Aewig lovely pass into Jared Bowen we've worked that one really nicely but then Jared Bowen has gone and given it away not the sort of play you would imagine he would want to try and establish himself on the right hand side of midfield Jesus now has it lovely little step over into the box on Bonner though an unlikely start for that man he with a brilliant challenge now releases it into Antonio up front on his own manages to keep hold of the ball James Ward-Prowse back into Antonio I was looking for the Ball into Calvin Phillips, I believe it was, but Antonio really poor yet again. But fortunately enough, it's fallen into James Ward-Prowse. Somerville now has it. Jared Bowen round the corner, continues into the box here. Jared Bowen on his left, straight at Ramsdale. Can he get the return? No, he can't. He's headed away to James Ward-Prowse. Turns it back around, finds Calvin Phillips on his left. Just puts it wide. Well, that would have been a marvellous goal had it gone in. What a brilliant strike on his left foot. I thought that was about to nestle into the top right-hand corner. Inches away, though, from giving us the lead. A sure to now bring this one out of defence at the very beginning of the second half here. The score's locked at nil-nil. Neither team able to break the deadlock, but Antonio is going to try and see if he can make the difference here now. And he does just that. What a fabulous goal from the 33-year-old Englishman. And round and round in circles he goes to celebrate. What a way to break the deadlock. Well, the away travelling fans got absolutely wild in their support as to the celebrations from the players. Lovely finish from Antonio. He managed to drive his way into the box 
and you wouldn't think he'd have the composure from there. But pick your spot. No chance of the goalkeeper. I'm delighted. 1-0. Zinchenko now has it. Arsenal looking to respond with immediate effect here. Finding themselves unlikely down 1-0 as Odegaard tries to go past Ogbonna. Bonner has done really well on his return to the starting 11. Hasn't really featured too much for me so far this season, but he's done a really good job when he has come back in. And now Johnson, the left back, to bring it forward. He's just straight offside. Unlucky Odegaard to burst through a couple of challenges and plays a ball into Saka, who once again can't go past Agbonna. Brilliant, brilliant defending from the veteran centre-back. And now Zinchenko has it on the left-hand side. Van Awig tried to come across the coverage. Johnson, though, with a big head away. Somerville now right into the path of James Ward-Prowse. That is a brilliant header. And now the Englishman can try and bring it away here, but he hasn't got the pace to get away. Instead, manages to hold the ball up just about. Plays it into Somerville, who plays it back into James Ward-Prowse down the left-hand side. Can I try and see if I can fling this one across to Kudos on as a substitute? Heads it down. Just puts it wide. He was inches away. I thought he was going to double our lead. How on earth did he miss? He got his head on it. Ramsdale, did he get a touch? I'm not quite sure. But oh my word, it just trickled past the post. I cannot believe it. It should have been 2-0 into Jorginho. About 20 minutes remaining on the clock here for Arsenal to try and find a way back into this game. But they've got to give it away in a really dangerous position. And Kudos now, one-on-one. -on -one. Can Kudos find a ball across into Antonio, who gets his second of the game. And he doubles our lead here at the Emirates. And once again, round and round of circles, he goes to celebrate. Well, it was all about the high press from Kudos. He won it back in such a dangerous position. And many would have tried to strike from there. But he had the composure and the generosity to just play it into the bath of Antonio who could just slice it into an empty net he gets his second brilliant goal 2-0 Zinchenko though has it for Arsenal they've got about 10 minutes remaining on the clock here to try and see if they can find a route back into this game it's thrown over who else but Ogbonna with a wonderful wonderful volley away Gabby Jesus turns it around the corner into Odegaard who strikes puts it wide well the goalkeeper must have got a touch on that because Arsenal have a corner it's floated in though Johnson with the head doesn't go very far in the end it's just looped over from Berardi into Van Aewig Arsenal press so high here, but the Dutch international has managed to wriggle away into Kudos now. Paqueta on as a substitute, plays it into Van Awig, and Van Awig still has the pace to get past Sinchenko. The Arsenal players are dead on their feet here, but so are my players. We play it back into Antonio, looking for his hat-trick. Ramsdale was equal to it, though. I thought he was nailed on there for that hat-trick. So unfortunate for the Englishman. But now we've got another opportunity. Paqueta to throw it in, looking for the head of Kudos once again. Berardi, though, with a big challenge. Deep into stoppage time here. Ogbonna wins the ball back. For me, he has been the man of the match. An absolute rock at the back for me so far in this game. As Calvin Phillips now brings it to the corner flag. Keeps it in play. Plays it back into the left back, Johnson. Johnson into Socek. Socek to turn it around. But it doesn't matter because the referee blows for full time. Well, after a real struggle to the start of this episode, we have turned it on its head. What a fabulous victory here at the Emirates. In no small part to this man, Mikel Antonio. His two goals were enough to give us a huge 2-0 victory at full time. Well, I have spoken a lot about the long-term future of this man, Mikel Antonio. Yes, he has dropped by three overall points now down to 75. But with him being an absolute club legend here at West Ham and with him getting two huge goals against Arsenal, perhaps he has still proved that he's got something left to give at this club. And not only is it two huge goals for him, but it's two huge goals for us as it helps us be Arsenal and end our winless run so far this episode in the Premier League and it begs the question with just six months remaining on this man's contract and with him being 33 years of age I do not know what to do with his long-term future should I consider giving him a contract extension or should I just let his contract run out come the end of the summer once again let me know down below in the comments what you think but with the January transfer window now officially open it's finally time to make one massive improvement to this squad before we do that though we are greeted with some very interesting news as both Hoffenheim and Brighton have come in with a very unlikely £6.2 million offer for Danny Ings. And with the Englishman keen to stay in Premier League football, he has decided to make the move over to Brighton and Hove Albion, which means he will be the first man to depart West Ham United in this transfer window. And with that leaving Mikel Antonio as the only recognised central striker here in the club, and with it helping us improve our budget now up to £49 million, it is finally time to get down to work. Now, I mentioned we have whittled it down to just four remaining remaining players on the shortlist who could potentially be the ones to join West Ham United this January. And at the time of me recording this video, with almost 300 of you voting on that final poll, arguably the biggest poll I think I've ever done on my channel, so thank you very much, you have all decided that it is the Swede 
Victor Gaiocares that you want to see applying his trade in a West Ham United shirt this season. And after several long drawn out conversations both with his manager to try and agree a deal and with himself and his agent to try and thrash out a contract we finally manage to get the deal over the line and it means that the towering 6 foot 2 25 year old Swede is currently playing for Sporting Lisbon in Portugal. The former Coventry City man will finally get his opportunity to step up and make his mark in the Premier League. Chosen by you, Victor Gaio Carez will join West Ham United Football Club to be our star striker this season for a whopping fee of £45.8 million. As you can see, it has almost wiped my budget entirely, but I'm still absolutely delighted. He's come in 82 rated. He will come in and certainly be the key figure for me up front. You can see from his overall stats, he's got fantastic physical stats, very good mental stats and decent technical stats to boot. I am confident this young man can be the future of West Ham United United up front and with the right training and development plan could turn into an absolute world beater. However, with his current kit number being 13 and the likes of Calvin Phillips being number 11, Lucas Paqueta being number 10 and Mikel Antonio being number 9, let me know down below in the comments what you think. Do I keep him as number unlucky number 13, some would say, or do I potentially consider moving him to the more traditional 11, 10 or 9? Let me know down below what you think. With his arrival though, I think this West Ham United team are going to be far more suited to moving away from this 4-3-3 tiki-taka false nine system into the more traditional 4-2-3-1. It means that Jared Bowen will lose his place up front to be replaced by the big Swede, but it finally means we've got a striker who can utilise his big attacking pace and power to get in behind defences, constantly being a threat going forward. And it also means that it gives us the opportunity to try and strengthen our bench even further. And with us now ready to kick off what is going to be a mammoth tie at the London State in the first leg of our semi-final in the Carabao Cup against Aston Villa. The big Swede is going to get the opportunity to impress on his debut at home in front of the West Ham fans once again under the lights as we look to try and see if we can put one foot into the Carabao Cup final. Fortunately enough, a bit of fitness has come back into my squad and it means a return to my strongest starting 11. Areola starts in goal. Van Awe get right back. Alvarez comes back in into centre-back with Mavropanis being his partner. Emerson on the left hand side. James Ward-Prowse is partnered by Socek with Kudos on the right. Somerville on the left. Paqueta starting behind the big man. Victor Gaiocares up front. So here we go then. What a game and what an opportunity for the big Swede to really show what he can do here today. A massive opportunity against the Premier League club and a massive opportunity for West Ham United to try and secure their first piece of silverware in years and our first silverware on this career mode. But my word, we almost throw it away inside the opening five minutes as Diaby managed to wriggle his way into the box. But fortunately enough, Ariola was on hand to just beat it away. An early scare here in the opening five minutes as Aston Villa have certainly started the better of the two teams. When Dia now into Hoybier, the former Spurs man, lovely ball down the channel into Matty Cash, throws it across to the back post looking for Jacob Ramsey he's beaten to it by Van Awig though who can manage to head the ball clear back out to Kudos and he can bring it clear now to burst down this right hand side and Kudos has got the beating of Luca Dina he's looking for Gaiocares who's trying to march into the box here Kudos now is he going to try and look for the cutback yes he does Gaiocares my word he could have got his debut goal here inside the opening 12 minutes but he was denied by the Argentinian World Cup winning goalkeeper Emmy Martinez my word this game has started at an absolutely frantic pace but Ketar into the box Kudos my word, what a flying save once again from Martinez. Kudos, can't believe it. I am struggling for breath here. End-to-end -end stuff in the opening 15 minutes. But gets off to throw it back in yet again. Kudos will try to get onto it with the head. Somerville on the volley. It bounces around in the penalty area. Martinez in the end collects it. Breathes a sigh of relief. Aston Villa can clear their lines. Long lay for Villa. He's chased down by Socek and won it back here. Got Ocares to turn it around. Oh, I was looking for the ball into Paqueta. Those two looking to form a formidable partnership up front for me. But unfortunately, I couldn't quite get the ball through. Emerson, though, will win it back and give away a free kick in the process. Ollie Watkins around the corner into Kamara. My word, what an opening 25 minutes here in front of the home West Ham fans as uh, James Ward-Prowse almost won the ball back, but Aston Villa still have it with Matty Cash down the right-hand side. Buendia, back into Hoybier, lovely stuff there just to unlock my midfield and my defence. Matty Cash down the right-hand side, Mavropanis comes across to challenge. Buendia floats it into the box though, but Ariola just picks that one out of the sky. It's really good goalkeeping from the Frenchman and now Kudos can try and bring this one forward. Looking for the run of Guy Ocares, but in the end gets the ball all wrong. Long lay to bring it clear. Matty Cash now looks to try and play it back into Longley. Longley into Kamara. Aston Villa building out from the back here. No one putting in a challenge, but Socek eventually is 
the man to do so. And eventually the ball does manage to fall to him. He can bring it forward, looking for Lucas Paqueta, but Diego Carlos manages to get there ahead of him. Goes central into Paqueta, but loses out. Paqueta does manage to win the ball back, though, and Somerville now can try and see if he can wriggle away from a couple of challenges. Doesn't, though. Hoybier wins it back in the centre of the park, and now Buendia can give it a Manny Cash on the right-hand side yet again. He's got the beating of Emerson down that left-hand side every single time. He seems to manage to wriggle away from him. Emerson comes back across, though, and eventually does manage to win the ball back. Really good defending. Somerville to bring it clear. Into Paqueta. A lovely ball down the channel. Can Somerville get there first? Yes, he can. Gokares has it once again. Plays it back into his path. And Somerville now drives into the box. Looking to make it 1-0. Oh, he's put it wide. Well, the fans cannot believe he's missed that one. Gokares cannot believe he hasn't got his first assist in a West Ham shirt. Somerville inches away from giving us a 1-0 lead. I cannot believe it. It should be 1-0. Well, the first 45 minutes are done. And my word, I've got to take a moment to catch my breath. An absolutely frantic first half here. But frustratingly, neither team able to break the deadlock. We certainly had the better of the two chances of the two teams. But frustratingly, we couldn't make it count now. As Kudos is going to try and see if he can make it count. Floats it across. Looking for the big sweep. Trying to get his head on it. Beaten, though, by Longley. Paqueta tries to win the reverse ball. Oli Watkins, though, is beaten off of it by James Wall Prowse, who gives away a free kick in the process. Kudos picks it up on the right hand side. Tries to keep hold of possession. Does just that. Alvarez now into Thomas Socek. Socek back across into Van Awig. Van Awig to try and bring it forward. He plays it into Lucas Paqueta, who's trying to wriggle away, but Diego Carlos. Once again, he's in the right place at the right time. And Ollie Watkins now has come deep to play it out to Buendia on the right-hand side here. Buendia turns it back into Hoy Bier. Aston Villa trying to build out from the back as uh, James Will Prowse tries to put the pressure on. And he does manage to put the pressure on as Emerson now wins the ball back high. Tries to play it down the channel. It was a poor ball. Longley won it back. And it's just that final pass in the final third that seems to be missing so far from our play. As James Will Prowse almost won the ball back from Longley yet again. My word, the Englishman is pressing so high here today. Really good performance from him. And now Gaiocares wins that one back yet again. Kudos to try and bring it forward. Looks for the ball around the corner into Van Awig. Van Awig to turn it back into Gaiocares on his right. Oh my word, he should have scored. But Emi Martinez was out like a flash and just about managed to get a hand on it. The Swede should have scored. He should have a goal and an assist to his name. But frustratingly, has not been able to have either so far. Going to be Hoybier with the free kick here just to try and dink this one into the box. It's well won though by the substitute shared. And now it falls to Kamara. Out to Matty Cash on the right-hand side. About 20 minutes remaining on the clock one of these two teams to try and see if they can break the deadlock. Emerson to try to put the brakes on uh, Manny Cash's cross. Manages to do it and now Somerville can try and bring this one away into Gaiocares who manages to hold off the challenge of his Nordic compatriot uh, Hoybier and now Jared Bowen on as a sub can bring this one down the channel into Somerville. Somerville to take on Longley. Manages to get away from him. Plays it across. It's a poor ball in the end. Easy for Kamara to get rid of it into Somerville. Somerville lovely little touch away from the defender into Gaiocares again on his left. This time Longley puts a block in corner and it's a corner that Lucas Paqueta is going to take on his left he's going to try and float this one in looking for the big Swede he finds the big Swede down once again Martinez is equal to it but he's knocking and knocking at the knocking at the door absolutely desperate to get his first goal in a West Ham United shirt it's thrown back into him and this time he drags his head wide Matty Cash frantically being chased by Somerville now about five minutes remaining on the clock here the high press is absolutely relentless here from West Ham as Gaiocares wins it back really well takes on the volley what a strike what a goal oh my goodness that is a contender for goal of the season. The big Swede in the 88th minute with arguably one of the best goals of his entire career. Absolutely fabulous. And look at the celebrations to boot from the players and the fans alike. Well, he won the ball in the air from the defender, the big power. And then the first time volley into the bottom left-hand corner. That is absolutely fabulous. What a way to mark your debut in front of the home fans. And has he already become a West Ham legend? What a way to get your first goal in a West Ham shirt. It's 1-0. James Ward-Prowse into Somerville. Somerville round the corner to Gaia Chris to chip it over Martinez. It just goes wide. Well, what a fabulous way to end what was an absolutely electric game under the lights here at the London Stadium. The big Swede already proving to be an absolutely sensational signing. Seven attempts. Just the one goal, but my word, what a fabulous goal it was. As a full-time here, we claim victory. 1-0 West Ham. Well, an absolutely outrageous goal from the 25-year-old Swede put us in a really positive position to try and cement our place in the Carabao Cup final. What a way to introduce yourself to the West Ham faithful. What a fabulous goal it was. And long may that fabulous form continue. But that will be that for the end of today's episode. Once again, thank you very much for your subs, your comments, your likes. I really do appreciate it. Keep those suggestions coming. And hopefully we can build on what has been a really positive first half of the season here at West Ham United Football Club. Thanks everyone for watching. And I'll see you again next time.